And now for a brief history of slavery. This is Candace Owens. She's a conservative author, political commentator, and activist that lives in the U.S., and although I know this is far from the kind of thing I usually talk about on my channel, this is one thing I could not let go by. So first, some context. This video by Owens is taken from PragerU, a conservative YouTube channel that says all kinds of, let's say, interesting things. I don't know whether Owens herself opted to host this video or whether she was commissioned to, but the optics of it is clear. A black woman speaking the so-called truth of slavery in the West and indeed the world. She's got to be unbiased, right? Well, let's take a look at what she said and how I, as a writer, see a Frankly, effective use of storytelling in order to frame what is essentially a terrible untruth. The truth is that Africans were sold into slavery by other black Africans, and in many cases, sold for items as trivial as gin and mirrors. Whites didn't go into the interior and round up the natives. They waited on the coast for their black partners to bring them black bodies. The stark reality is that our lives had very little value to our ancestors. This is something I've heard before. Not just from other public speakers, but even from my friends. The very same black people descended from the enslaved black bodies Owens and others talk about. Here's the beauty about this. It's not true. I mean, it is, but it's also not. Yes, African people did conquer, enslave, and sell Africans. The untruth, the clever bending of the truth, comes with presenting these people as selling their fellow Africans, others of their own people. They didn't. Not really. Okay, so the problem with the statement is that it's disingenuous to begin with. Here's why. You can't take a 20th century mindset and apply it to 16th and 17th century people. Like, black people didn't become black until they came to the new world. For example, in Western Africa alone, there are thousands of different ethnic groups who speak a different language, have different cultures, and have completely different worldviews and religions. So, why in the world would they view each other as the same? Yes. They did enslave other people who live on the continent of Africa, but they did not enslave their own people. They weren't black people, and they didn't see themselves as part of one race, which is itself a modern concept. They were people with different languages and cultures. I live in Jamaica. The very first European nation to conquer and colonize this island was Spain. Then England came and fought the Spaniards for the island. And no one ever says that these Europeans fought and killed their own people for this territory. Do they? For example, when the Romans pretty much went into Northern Europe and were raping and pillaging the entire region, nobody ever then goes and looks at that history and says to themselves, wow, look at all these white people brutalizing other white people. The Romans even made slaves out of their northern European counterparts, like the Germanic tribes, the people of Hispania, and the Celts themselves, aka other white people. And yet, people so willingly say that black people enslaved their own people. Before I continue, I am not excusing what these African people did. Slavery is terrible and immoral no matter who is enslaved and who enslaves. But I think there is something at work here that we should take a look at. What point are Owens and PragerU trying to make with this story? If you think slavery is a relic of the past, you're wrong. There are some 700,000 slaves in Africa today, right now. That's the lowest estimate that I could find. Other sources say there are many more. 
child soldiers, human trafficking, forced labor. These are the conditions that currently exist within the same sub-Saharan region where the transatlantic slave trade originated. African bodies are being sold today like they were sold then. And no, they are not being purchased by any country of white men. In fact, slavery, by any traditional definition, is exclusively practiced today within non-white countries. And here it comes to light. That is an incorrect statement, a quite frankly disgusting disparagement of so many peoples, and all for the sake of exonerating white people. Owen lives in the US, and from my research, there were approximately 403,000 people living in enslavement in the United States in 2016. The United States of America, that Owen seems so interested in presenting as a saint in the war on slavery. I'm pretty sure that Owens and Prager you would not be very keen on saying that the US is one of those non-white nations in which slavery exists. Pay attention to what Owens says. White people were the first to formally put an end to slavery. In 1833, Britain was the first country in the history of the world to pass a Slavery Abolition Act. They were quickly followed by France, who in 1848 abolished slavery in her many colonies. Then, of course, came the 13th Amendment in the United States Constitution. Unfortunately, this order of events is not so clear-cut. Apparently, France abolished slavery in 1794 before establishing it again in the colonies in 1802. But just two years later, in 1804, Haiti gained their independence, which by the way, they fought for and were not given. Haiti became the first country in the Americas to abolish slavery. This is while Owens' United States still held on to their enslaved. And, of course, these white French moral leaders who liberated the enslaved in the colonies charged Haiti heavy reparations and did not recognize their nationhood until 1825. I guess Haiti doesn't deserve to be mentioned in Prager U and Owens' timeline. Again, slavery is a horrible, immoral institution, no matter who imposes it. We are right to point out that the transatlantic slave trade and all other slave systems, both past and present, are morally inexcusable. And that is what's so terrible about what Owens is doing here. The funny thing is that even though Owens says, No one, regardless of skin color, stands guiltless. She seems to be presenting white people as victims. They are the ones who freed our ancestors after all. They fought, they bled for our liberation, right? But this does not negate the fact that slavery was legal and reinforced by European people who for centuries thought of us as not worthy of a right that they took for granted. Yes, Africans did enslave people. Yes, Africans do enslave people. That does not excuse the Europeans who did, or the Europeans who do, or the European Americans who do, or anyone who does. Prager U and Owens' tactic is a dishonest one. They spin a tale, they weave a narrative, one that is close enough to reality that it works. It convinces that they are right. And to what end? I'll leave that for you to answer. Thanks for watching. I've been Ken Kwame, and I'll see you next time.